Hey there, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts. And today I'm going to share a tutorial for this window pane blanket that my daughter Nicolina made. And we'll go over a few things that I think that um, can help you to carry that yarn just a little bit more efficiently so that you don't see the little bits poking through. But overall, the design is just gorgeous and you're gonna love it. So the yarn that we've used for this blanket is Bernat Softy Baby Cotton. It's cotton 60-40. So there is 40% acrylic in it. it. Makes it super soft. It's very washable. I put uh, that blanket into my washing machine and dried it in the dryer and it came out beautiful. Um, this color is called Soft Plum. I'll just refer to it as purple. And this is a uh, cream colored and the name of it is cotton, but I'll refer to it as cream. Just a little bit easier for me. Um, I am using a G four millimeter hook and I do love my Susan Bates hooks. Um, but you're gonna wanna do this practice watch and kind of get your gauge and, and see what the correct hook size will be for you. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go. So I'm going to make a base chain. The pattern repeat for this is any number times 15. So I am going to do 15 times three. That'll kind of give us a, um, a beginning. You'll be able to see what the beginning looks like of the blanket and the end. So you'll get two sides plus how to change yarn in the middle. Of course, you know, in the real blanket, you'll be changing multiple times, but I think you'll get the gist of it with this small little sample. So get 45 chains going and we'll get started. We're going to begin in the third chain from the hook with our first half double crochet. Yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. In case you needed a little refresher, I'll just do one just really slow. Yarn over, I'm inserting my hook and in underneath that top chain, pulling up a loop and I kind of like to pull it up even and then pull through all three. So we're working this for the next 13. We'll have 13 stitches in cream and then stitch 14 and 15 will be in purple. Okay, as I'm making this 13th stitch I want to just work half of it go ahead and stop before I pull through yeah I wanted to just double check that I had 13 now I will put the cream forward start getting in that habit now the cream is going to stay to the front of our work the purple to the back so I'm just simply laying this, the purple over the hook and then I'll pull it through. Kind of get my tail out of the way. Now I'm going to work the next two stitches in purple and as I do that I'm working underneath the cream. I'm, I'm going to be carrying that along the row. So I pull up, here is stitch number 14, and on stitch number 15, we're going to change back to the cream. So just work half of the stitch, keep your purple to the back, we don't need to pull that forward. Pull up the cream and finish the stitch. Now I kind of do some little adjusting, a little tugging just a tiny bit to make sure everything is pulling and laying. The idea is to get that yarn to lay nicely 
along the row as we crochet over it. So now I will be working into the next stitch and underneath the purple yarn, I'll be carrying it along the row with me. Kind of, I always, you know, I guess, give it just that little bit of a tug to make sure it's lying flat. And here's why I'm saying a practice swatch is so helpful, is to get your right hook size. If this is too loose, the yarn really will show through the row and has the chance of getting snagged. If it's too tight, it sort of turns into a, uh, a rug, the drape isn't as good. So there is just like that happy spot and maybe you need to go down a hook size, maybe you need to go up a hook size. It really depends on your personal tension. So there definitely is a learning curve with carrying yarn along with you. I'm just now starting stitch 13. So I'll pull this up. Make sure I'm putting the cream forward before I pull through with purple. That also is another thing that will help you from getting the yarn all twisted on itself. Keep one color to the front, one to the back. Okay, now let's work these next two stitches. purple to the back, pull through. Now we will have, if we count it correctly, 13 stitches to the end of the row. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Perfect. And I go ahead and carry the purple with me. And the purple is just going to be carried now throughout the whole blanket. The only time really that it's not is just on that, that little starting amount because um, it's just so tricky to carry it along the chain when you don't have any stitches left yet. So it's not that noticeable, but the rest of the time, yes, I am carrying the yarn. I get a lot of questions about is this wasteful and maybe you're thinking that too but for this design i will say this is the most efficient way to achieve this design is to go ahead and carry the color through the row um, another way that i have seen people do but i think it becomes so cumbersome when you are changing colors this frequently is you could do each of these its own little bobbin and I've done that too, but it is very cumbersome to turn the blanket every time if you have, say, 15 little bobbins of, bobbins of color. Um, so there is that. Okay, I'm on this last stitch, and this is another thing I wanted to point out is that I'll make sure too, before I even carry it up the side of the blanket, just give it that little tug, make sure it's lying flat. And yes, you can see that it, a little bit through the stitches, you can see it, but it really, it um, adds to the overall effect of the blanket and it's not really, I didn't, I, not a problem. Beautiful. Okay, so when we're ready, we just wrap the purple around the back. So I'm just wrapping it, getting it ready. And the two turning chains don't count as a stitch, they just help provide height 
I'll work right into that large hole I see that's facing me underneath the two V's and underneath the carried yarn there. I need to yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, all the while pulling the purple along with me. Now I found, after I got that base row established, I really didn't need to um, concentrate so much on counting because it kind of became obvious <laughs> when I was ready to do my last stitch. So that was kind of nice. So right when I get up to this last V that's cream, I pull up the loop, I put my cream forward, I kind of hold it with my thumb there for a second, give a nice little tug on the purple, make sure it's lying flat against the row, pull through, I mean that's your chance right there because once you pull it through and make the stitch it kind of locks it in there. Then I'll grab that, my carried yarn, Work the two stitches in purple. Keep the purple to the back. Pull up. And then I'm on my way for the next section. Okay, work my, the cream one, pull it forward, give the purple just a little bit of a tug to make sure it's laying flat, pull through, get my cream ready to go, work two stitches. Now finish, we're back to, we've got two rows worked. And I am carrying the purple across in this one. So I've worked 10 rows and what you really wanna do is make sure you know, this blanket can be really flexible for you if you wanted to make your squares even larger, but I'm just measuring my white stitches and they're three inches. And so I went as high, so it's close to three, my 10 rows. I like to try and keep these um, even so that when we do the purple lines, they look the same. So whatever number of rows you wanna do, this is 10 rows. So say you did want to make yours, your, or you're using different yarn and you want to make your grid larger. The pattern repeat is just the number of the white stitches plus two purple. So remember I told you the pattern repeat was 15. That's because we have 13 cream and two purple. So if you wanted this to be a little bit wider, or smaller, you're just gonna take that number of however many white ones plus your two purple times any number. If you're always gonna use half double crochet, you'll always start in that third chain from the hook and it will work out for you. So this is my 10th row. I'm going to take a small little break from carrying yarn and I am just going to chain two and turn with purple. And now we get to work the next two rows all in half double crochet and create that, that window pane look that I just absolutely love.
So this is what it will look like when you get your two rows. And here we go. So at the last step, I don't pull through. I reach down on the side and pull my cream yarn up. And this all gets covered with the border anyway, so it should be fine. Do my chain two. And here we go. Start carrying that yarn. We've got 13, and this probably is the row where you really do need to pay attention again to the counting, just to make sure you are getting the 14th and 15th stitch lined up with the ones below. So here's stitch 13. I'm still, hopefully that's going well for you, keeping one to the front, one to the back. Pull through. Keep my purple to the back. And we're on our way. Looks like we did it. It's lining up. So I'll get I'll just do a couple more rows and then I will demonstrate to you the border. Okay, if you can pretend with me for a second that this is just like I've got my final um what did I say this was? 10 rows to finish the blanket. Let me show you how I got the border started. So, I'm just going to chain and turn and I'm going to work one round of all single crochet. So you can weave the ends in if you would like before we get started. It's before you get started. Um, it's up to you. When you get here to the last stitch of the row, I am going to work single crochet chain two and single crochet to sort of just turn the corner there and now i would like to work two single crochets at the end of one row and then skip a row And about every third time, I go ahead and I work three in there. Mainly because we have more stitches across than we do the row. So if you think of it as we have 12 rows, but we worked 15 stitches across, we wanna try and get those 15 stitches in here. So working, and I also like to keep it as neat as possible, which is another reason why I go every other row. So I usually, I work two, skip, and then I work three. And yes, you'll see those little bits of purple. So if you want to make it work, that you're going over those, that's fine too. I really do find though that the little bits just sort of blend in with the whole blanket and it doesn't, it really doesn't show once it's all done. Okay, at the, now I'm kind of here at the corner so I'll do that same corner technique with the two single crochet, two and single crochet. And that gets me, and I'm, we'll, we'll be working on the underside of this chain now. Just kind of where they cross, I'll work my single crochets. So the goal is as evenly as possible. <laughs> and that's why you kind of need to 
work that extra couple extra single crochets in there to get that going. And then the next round we'll do all double crochet. So I'll finish this and come back. So I have this bordered. I've got my single crochets worked around and I'm back here to that starting. So I'm just going to work my final single crochet chain two and then I'll single crochet right in there. So we kind of have our little corner there. Now, I'm not going to turn or anything. It's much easier if we just get going. And so in the next single crochet, work a double crochet. And when you get to the corner, you're going to work double crochet, chain two, double crochet right around those chain two spaces. So I'm right here to this first corner and I'm working the double crochet, chain two, oops, chain two, double crochet, And then I'll continue working around and I'll meet you back at the next after you've worked this whole round and I'll we'll just keep going and I'll show you how to work the front and back post double crochet as you complete this round of double crochet in that final corner work your double crochet chain two double crochet around the chain two that was from the row be below. And now we can just get working. And you know what? I should have chained two and I forgot. So <laughs> pretend that was a chain two. Go back and um, let's go ahead and start. This should be a stitch here. We'll just do a front post double crochet right there. And on the next one, the next double crochet, work it back post. Here's front post. We're just going to alternate these. So if you've never seen post crochet, what I'm talking about, this, this vertical part of the stitch is called the post. So I'm inserting my hook from the back and popping it to the back. And then I'll bring that right through and just work your double crochet normally. So this one is front post. I'm popping it towards the front or towards me. And this one, I enter from the back and back post. Just pull it through, two and two. Then I'll show you what we do when we get to the corner. So as I get to the corner, this is how you will work it. So this happened to turn out in my pattern to be a front post, which is fine. So I work that and around these chain twos, I will just simply work a double crochet, two chains and a double crochet. Now you can choose to continue, start again, and have, since this one was a front, go front, or you can make it go back. It, it's totally up to you. But we're going to continue alternating them. Okay, so that's how you work those corners, and I'll meet you back and show you how to continue for the next round. So as you finish this round, still just work that same double crochet, chain two, that sort of begins the next round. And here we are to the start. So kind of look ahead. So I'm seeing that this is a back, this is a front, so I wanna make this one a back. And now you will just 
Again, just keep going around and you match the direction of the post from the previous row or the previous round. If it's, you know, was one that was to the back, then make sure you pop to the back. And that kind of like, it makes it line up and looks like ribbing. It's a really cute look. So I'm going to work, I will work um, three more, like this round and one more round. And then that was, and then that was plenty of those. So you basically, that's all you're going to do is um, finish that off with three rounds. And then when you get back to this round, just find that after you work the corner, just slip stitch to the top of that next stitch and tie off and then weave in your ends. And then you'll be done. You'll be so happy that you're done. So like I want to um, say again, you know, the yarn, you can see it. If you're seeing it a lot, make sure you're doing those that little tug. This is the same technique I use on my gingham blankets. Um, but can you tell, like, after it's all done, it really, you, you really can't see it. It just kind of blends into the... Um, into the blanket. It gives it a really nice weight. It looks the same on both sides. So I'm trying to think of all the th all the comments and things that I've seen through the years as as I as I make these types of blankets. I love carrying the yarn and doing different things with the color. Um, this is a newer newer way of doing the corners though for ribbing. That, we've, that I kind of think is easier, so hopefully that is helpful. I used to just do three in the corner, but I'm finding doing double crochet, chain two, double crochet is just a little bit easier. So that is a little bit different on our ribbing borders. So anyway, good luck. I hope that um, your blanket is a success. I know it will be. This is such a cute little pattern. We can't wait to make it in more colors, and I can't wait to see the colors that you guys might make it in. So come and share with us in the Daisy Farm Crafter group on Facebook, or share your photo on Instagram, and just add the hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts, and we're happy to share it into our stories. So thank you very much, everyone. You have a good day.